Hello and welcome. Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Quench Light Sessions. This is your host, Omar Khan, and I'm back with another session, another guest, and uh, yet again, I'm very excited. But today's excitement is a little more because today's show is a very exclusive show. Because today's guest is not an uh, ordinary personality. Because today we have a royal family member. Hai. आज हमारे साथ एक बड़ी इंटरेस्टिंग और हिस्टोरिक पर्सनालिटी मौजूद है उनकी फैमिली इज क्वाइट हिस्टोरिक एंड द थिंग्स दैट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू शेयर इज समथिंग दैट यू हैव नेवर रेड इन द हिस्टोरिक बुक्स क्योंकि पाकिस्तान बनना उसकी एक पूरी तहरीक के पाकिस्तान का वजूद में आना वो सारी बात करेंगे यहां तक कि ब्रिटिश राज ने जब टेक ओवर किया uh from the mughal sultanate to us waqt muslim states uh ki kya surat e hal thi aur kya kuch tha wo sab aaj we going to talk about aur uske liye hamare sath royal family ke member maujood hain today we have with us prince heather clark of state vijnor and uh, let me t- introduce him kyunki i have got so much to say so i'll take a little uh, longer so he also uh, has the title of clark lewis that he will tell uh, us about uh, ki what these titles are because the ordinary people have no clue uh, how a royal uh, family member and royal family uh, works around he is also an uh, international fashion model uh, he's also a business partner in clouds award hotel is the president and chairperson for sef a social activist for gender equality and women empowerment pre education to remote areas indo pak peace kashmir agenda preserve art culture and heritage uh, prince clark is a performing artist of contemporary bharatnatyam and kathak he is a peace ambassador of us department general higher commission uh, he is also an english news anchor at park news and author of three books prince mira hader is uh, the crown prince of state bijnor son of his excellency uh, her excellency princess uh, sayeda alia zedi and uh, his excellency uh, sayed mira m araz zedi he is the grandson disciple of raja sahib mahmudabad co-founder and financier of tehreek-e azad e pakistan alongside our great guide mohammad ali jinnah and great azam raja Mira Azad Sahib of Bijnor who also had the title pillar of gold uh, given by Queen Victoria he is also the recipient of royal order of Yildimir Khan Sahib ICCR title award India excellence award and Tamghai Khidmat Pakistan so i hope uh, i not make any mistake welcome to the show prince adar hope you doing well adab thank you so much for the invitation Uh, you are most welcome and yes adab uh, you know we are not very uh, used to having royal people on our show so this is the first time so it, it's something to add on to my experience as well but thank you so much for your time and thank you for being so kind uh, for being part of branch live sessions today pleasure it's pleasure to hear from you it's pleasure to listen from you thank you so much amar uh, you are most welcome now let's start off this conversation uh, from this whole covid situation that we know we're stuck in it's been over 5 months and now we're coming towards a uh, um, new normal life things are coming slowly and gradually towards the normal side but uh, talk us through because you're so much into the social work and people look up to you and uh, as i introduce you you know you have such an occupied day how this covid affected you your life your work and how did you adapt it to it accordingly uh see if the first of all when you talk about the covid covid it actually means a restriction where you cannot go anywhere you will not be able to work properly definitely your personal life to your professional life gets badly affected the thing is something is something like that you know uh, my work was badly influenced because we have uh, the family business what we owe is uh, actually the hotel business what we have in india uh, so when there would be no guests there would be no ceremonies there would be nothing to do over there so definitely you wouldn't be earning anything out of it so what you have to do is this you have to pay from your own budget your personal budget to your employees for your bills for your taxation and multiple more right for the expenses that uh, that you know what takes place in the meanwhile when it comes to your personal life you are unable to go anywhere you know you get badly occupied in your own residence 
mm. for numerous days uh, you know that that anxiety what develops in you the person who's so active he goes everywhere probably he's unable to meet anyone i mean mm. the person who lives in a central in the heart of a city where people come to meet you and you will not be able to meet a single person except few of those who live with you that's it neither mm. even those the, the, those people are so much like occupied and restricted into the residence that they cannot go outside and you know this is really harsh like you know it's so hard it's like a second kashmir you are living in india so, so this is so weird to live but you know this is kind of a disaster or whatever you call from the god that has given uh, an alert sign or a warning to get alert to help people and to be their support and i hope people can learn something out of it absolutely you know where there's so much trouble especially if i talk about india the rising of corona virus in india is absolutely uh, you know so disastrous because the numbers are growing and growing and growing things here in pakistan are much more controlled but i'm uh, very worried because the human lives on stake and the way things are growing it's uh, something that everyone around the globe is very uh, you know um, still okay. in danger and uh, now let's just talk about the whole uh, journey because there's so much to talk about and i'm so excited about nice. today's session because there uh, there's so many things that i want to ask you because uh, you know i have only seen these royal palaces and this royal life and how you guys uh, roam around and with all the titles you know you, you yourself have like 5 to 6 titles like you you're also called the yuvraj shahzada prince clark lewis and the lots of tamgars and all so i'll be talking about each and everything one by one but let's just start off with the uh, historic um, uh, you know stories of your family because uh, this your journey starts from iran to turkey and then india migration so just talk us through uh, the whole khandan and the whole uh, shajra you know jo aapka sadiyon se chala aa raha hai uh perhaps this pillar on the ring i would say that uh, the shajrai nasab what i particularly belong uh, it's like around 1400 years old it has a great connection wow. with the family of holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam so i am actually uh, from the hera of uh, imam zain al abidin alaihi salam my my father's side is najib ut taraf and they both are sayyid my mother's end is sayyid plus her sada and they belong from the first caliph uh, but the thing what makes us uh, come together is something like that we uh, follow the terminology of following ahle bayt the five selected ones the five members of the family of prophet so this is right. where uh, what we both follow and you know this family this this thing started all the way from iraq uh, i would like to take you back uh, to uh, 10th century or 12th century when uh, Fatimid Khilafat uh, was there so Fatimid Khilafat is one of the oldest khilafats it, it, it was located in Iraq and it was spread all the way from Syria to Nigeria and Africa and in the meanwhile the caliphs ruled all the way for from 10th century to 12th century mm -hmm. and uh, this period was around uh, 1160 1160 was the period when i'm talking about this particular dates uh, but you know the problem is this uh, no matter what we guys call ourselves muslims or what but there is a history unfortunately which is a fact a practical fact that people have been fighting badly for the you know for the lands they have a greed so uh, in short you kehne ko aap you are a muslim but you know unfortunately people are fighting for lust greed land power so right. if you will see bunch of uh, khilafats coming on the one thing would be common is uh, getting a grip on the power hmm. this is something which is very common so fatimid khilafat uh, uh, my my father's uh, family was a part of fatimid khilafat so in when in the last 12th century in this, uh, in 1170 when the fatimid khilafat was attacked by abbas khilafat So, and, and Abbas and Khalafat had my forefathers, which belonged from the first caliph. They, these both were not exactly the rulers, but because they were more into this, you know, spiritual and darbar system, so they both belonged to Fatima Khalafat and Abbas and Khalafat. Time right. crossed on, and uh, you know, when you talk about uh, the attacks, Mongols are very much uh, a known oh, yeah. people. Who, uh, who became who later became a, a modern and they call themselves you know moguls the moguls is an, is a basically a, 
it's basically a modern name for mongols who are very gypsies who were the people who are great attackers they used they used to have this very you know wild uh, background so mongols attacked even, about even if we talk about the ottoman empire the so yeah. osmania sultanate osmania exactly. the uh, conquer the, the the whole series that's very viral these days around uh, asia yeah. specific you know even the conqueror arthurgul the father of osman he was also um, uh, you know a nomad guy uh, who was who the khana badosh log the and they just conquered so in every start of every state there is one conqueror who starts it and then things build up and all so i totally get the point and even the title of khans the race of khans also is derived from mongols as well yeah uh, okay but i would like to make a little uh, you know exception to it that you know all the khans uh, uh, actually doesn't belongs to mongol because when you talk about the ghair sadat part right so uh, you will see a khan tribe also emerging from the abbasi khalafa hmm. so this is this is, and that, that, that's where my family uh, of my nanihal a little of the little of my nanihal belongs from Rajasthan right. Mehmudabad family, right? So right. Abbasid Khilafat was badly affected when Genghis Khan attacked uh, in uh, in 1258. Uh, yeah, 1258, Genghis Khan attacked Baghdad. Uh, these uh, locations, these residences, these mansions were one of the were were one of the biggest Persian emperors one once you know a long time back, and they were the most established cities of their own period. Uh, even if you talk about the Sultanate Usmania that you were talking about, right? Uh, right. You you are actually directing my topic towards the Turk, right? So right. I will take you uh, to uh, to Turkey when Abbasid Khilafat was attacked by Mongols. Our forefathers had to leave their space and their uh, and their posts, and they had to grab whatever they could grab from their estate and their property and their finances and and whatever they had assets. They traveled over there to Turkey. but unfortunately turkey was already quite built up uh, they already had their own sultan as you talked about and uh, you know already having the sultan and moving to a place where you are already from a royal family it's difficult to you know merge and live together uh, right. with the respect uh, because nobody would like to call um, a, a you know a, a gypsy nobody would like to call a person who's a refugee especially from a royal family so spending time in turkey was not really very good when the family moved and you know these both which year are you talking about which year are you talking about i'm talking about in 1258 when genghis khan attacked uh like uh, prince i think there's a little confusion genghis khan died in 1227 yeah so i'm sorry yeah uh, so his son, grand uh, his grand yeah so his uh, maybe uh, you're talking about ogas his son or his grandson yeah. maybe and uh, the sultanate usmania started in 1301 Exactly. So the the first sultan was the son of uh, Osman, and that was Orhan. So the yeah. first sultan was Orhan, and he came in around I think thirteen twenty ish something like that. Yeah, I, I'll guide you to that particular path as well. See, when right. uh, in twelve fifty eight, see, Jangiz Khan is actually a name. He's a brand of his yeah. period. So you know uh, what happened in in the royal families. What happens into the rulers or or the people who are attacking? What you feel proud is when you go to a certain city for even to attack some city. You always yeah. say, "I am the son of this father." I yes. get the point. Son of this father. Yes. They always take the name of their father. So this is where Jangiz mm-hmm. Khan's name appeared for the first time in Baghdad, and people mm-hmm. were like, "This is the army of Bagh- this is the army of Jangiz Khan." Yes. Because. Uh- In the very initial period, Genghis Khan was not really that uh, you know uh, affected uh, or, or big affected towards the Baghdad. There have right. been the rivalries earlier as well, but there were there wasn't that big rivalry on Baghdad which his mm-hmm. grandson made on his name. Yeah, it was like that that he brought his grandfather's name to Baghdad. Are you getting my right. point? Yes, sir. Then we talk about Sultan of Osmania. Definitely, when Abbasid Khilafat, all the way, we had to because you know when you were robbed, you were attacked in Baghdad. So definitely, you cannot just pick your 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 things and just run away. You take time. You take time of days, weeks. It could be months as well. So which yeah, period? Yeah, it takes centuries. It takes centuries to build a exactly. state. It takes yeah. centuries, of course. 
So uh, from that Baghdad, uh, sorry, from that Baghdad Abbasid Khilafat, the families, uh, because you know there was there was a continuous attack in the Baghdad. The, in, it was not like you know that some person will come and attack you and then you will go out and run away from the Baghdad. That's not what happened. Because it, you will live in a region, right? And leaving leaving your entire property back was not the option. इंटरवर्ल्स when they moved first raja sahib mahmudabad moved to this uh, uh, turkey and then the families of sadat and hator moved to the fam- uh, towards this turkey but the possession and possession the condition was same that they were not able to establish the empire because empire over there was already established the politics of jangiz khan family was already approaching turkey so they were not able to establish their homeland over there and the politics was was really on hype people to you know uh, to crush them were already active to you know uh, take a grip over them so they had to leave turkey all the way uh, in in 1250 uh, no not 1258 it was i guess uh, 12 uh, 12 yeah it was around 1250s where uh, the mongols they left turkey and uh, you know things were uh, in control of the uh, start of and build up of ottoman empire so let's just move towards the british raj era now uh where uh, you know the, the fall of mughal sultanate was there and the, there there's so much hard stories from your family as well that uh, you lost so much you know all the court cases and especially uh, the price that you your family paid for uh, creating uh, tehreek e pakistan and uh, supporting and financing that and staying in india it was uh, like a curse for you guys that you lost all of your property it was confiscated by the government as well so let's just start from that uh, i will not give any political uh, statements because i guess i'm on the media right now and there must uh, be a lot of people who are watching me so definitely i wouldn't i don't want to be you know okay, uh, i'll take that back i'll take that back but i'll i'll, I'll share some very historic pictures and yeah, sure. uh, you can uh, talk us through that what moments and what memories are there because there's so many uh, interesting uh, pictures especially that i have uh, today in store So right now, uh, what do you see on screen? Can you just talk us through what this moment was? Uh, this picture actually belongs from a period when the Bijnor family and Hamudabad family were properly established in Bijnor state and Hamudabad state. But unfortunately, you know, uh, after the Mughal rule, the okay Mughal rule, uh, this this actually belongs to Rani Sahib of Bijnor, uh, the grand, uh, the Raj Mata of the. Uh, the rajmata of the bijnor state she was leaving the palace she was really young she was having a very young child prince with him and she was leaving the palace the reason was that the british attacked the palace uh, coming to the british british was there on the invitation of the moguls mogul see every every each uh, emperor have certain weaknesses or mistake what they make because no one is god right so mogul rule in the end made a very big mistake that they invited the british to work and trade with them over period that you know that consistency of arrival of british and their army and their ambassadors and the ministers made the country weaker and actually they tried to infect an infect a virus of you know divide and rule policy in the in the you know in the sector so which time when uh, they get a grip over the Uh, over the indian uh, sector the indian region what they did was that they overruled the rajas and the maharajas so rajas and maharajas were really in a shock in a very big uh, shock that they were not willing to because you know they already were suffering the term mughal sultanate but with time be, being a muslim they somehow got settled with them over period and initial period with mughal uh, mughal empire was not really good honestly speaking because unfortunately they were same mongols what they left in iraq if you remember so now they were over here once again so in a different form in a, in a in a very efficient way so over here what they did was that they tried to be friends with them over time uh, what they used to do was that they used to exchange 
men and women in form of their sons and daughters to maintain upper class system and yeah. to keep the very friendly terminologies with them the properties were ex exchanged in the form of gifts in the form of jewels in the form of you know um, association with each other and this in and after certain years a gap of years gap of gap of you know mughal sultanate uh, rulers the rajas maharajas came closer to them especially the muslim rulers at got right. attached uh, to the sultanate of awadh awadh right. is a big region which hold multiple of regions and states and each state had their own raja yes the one who was the former king was now the raja of the state the former king became the current raja now anyway one level decrease unfortunately so so uh, mughal rule made a big, made their weak weakness and they let the british access uh, the india and when Br british tried to overwhelm them overcome them they really felt bad about it nawab bajid ali shah was the last nawab of awadh his son was birgis qadr and begum hazrat nehal was the second wife who was the most dominant queen of awadh at that time awadh was much like mumbai and delhi like the current uh, you know posh area like what you guys call in dha and kifton and the posh areas at that time awadh the lucknow and faizabad were the most posh areas of the period so what oh. all nawab used to do is this they, they used to go to lucknow and faizabad and enjoy their peaceful period with literature art music and have some gamblings and gossips and political discussions so that was the hub hub for right. the uh, the rule of the mughal and the muslim period but right. unfortunately that was also the central of the queen palace where other rajas established their small establishments around the the avad uh, the avad sultanate uh, apart right. from their original regions right like bijnor second establishment was located in the heart of lucknow yes see so that was the second establishment of bijnor in the very meanwhile mehmudabad my nanhial right the bijnor is my dadhial mehmudabad is my nanhial and we also have a very great connection uh, together So right. Mehmudabad also had a lot of properties in Uttar Pradesh and in UP uh, and uh, in Lucknow as well. But the palace of Bijnor State, the second establishment, was established in uh, in the very close to this uh, Lucknow. It was actually in Lucknow, very close to the palace of Nawab Bajaj Ali Shah. Uh, then, when the uh, British attacked and they questioned and they wanted people to surrender in front of them. Hazrat Begum Mehal left us a great sequence of notes and letters to take to be a part of the battle and become a support towards the entire subcontinent. At that right. time, there was no concept of India and Pakistan. At that right. time, that was the fight of Hindu, Muslims, Sikhs, the the Aryans, all the people who were the Rajputana, the Nawabs. They all united together. formed a, a certain big army and fought against the british my grandfathers raja sahib mehmudabad and raja sahib mira izaz ali was very younger his father imtiaz ali was the current raja at that time so he and mehmudabad tried the uh, the the palace uh, and the british uh, of uh, the british you know the british uh, it's called the british uh, locations where they have their own regimes of army uh, coming up so they attacked that zone and a british attacked them back on the and in the meanwhile so things right. with over time and this battle prolonged for several months this battle actually prolonged for several months and with time the nawabs came to an end with the time the mira ibraz ali uh, was uh, you know forced to be captured in the meanwhile the mehmudabad palace was badly affected by the bombardment because it was close to lucknow not exactly in the lucknow it was close to lucknow in the meanwhile the the, the lucknow palace of bijnor state the second establishment was completely bombarded and destroyed and the british never let that particular you know like that particular residents come up because it was exactly in the heart of the palace of uh, the nawab bajaj ali shah so if they will permit them to develop that particular you know uh, castle again it was like a big insult a big insult towards the entire british uh, you know uh, british hukumat what you guys call in urdu to us time pe phir ye hua ke bijnor ke baap ki taraf jab bin raja sahib was returning to he got a messenger uh, a messenger is a person who's called qasid 
खासियत इज अर्सन जो आपके पास मैसेजेस लेके आता है ठीक है और खासियत के जो मैंने टोल्ड हूँ कि भाई राजू साहेब हमारे जो हमारा प्रॉपर्टी है पहली स्टेब्लिशमेंट जो नेटोल में प्लेसड अप है इस पर भी हमला होने वाला है और वी हैव ऑलरेडी इन्फॉर्म्ड पीपल दैट के सतर्क रहें दे कॉल सतर्क स्टे अवेयर स्टे अलर्ट सतर्क रहे रहिए और and rani sahiba is alone over there the raj mata is alone over there the maharani sahiba is also there and the kuwar the kuwar means young prince is also there in the palace so right. on his way back when he was returning uh, they got to know that the palace has been attacked unfortunately right. so the mira izaz palace was badly destroyed and for, uh, fortunately it was rebuilt once again but the maharani left the palace with rani sahiba and the kuwar you might have seen that picture what you were showing me i'll, I'll um, take some pictures uh, of the castle as well you can just uh, talk us through uh, if yeah you, this belong from the lucknow palace which was in the heart of uh, the uh, in the in the heart of the wajid shah's uh, you know his own uh, and this palace was never built again because this if this would have gone built again this would have given a big insult to the british so they did not let this uh, thing you know come alive once again and now right. it's just a form of a historical location in the heart of lucknow so this is the second establishment of bijnor state right uh, then comes the second the first the nator sadat e nator which is located in uh, nator the first establishment uh, this establishment uh, was affected but raja sahib himself was hiding in uh, there is a very small village called uh, pakhanpur village pakhanpur right. village was a place which uh, these people of pakhanpur were very loyal to his raja uh, right. my grandfather sorry great grandfather so since right. they were very loyal towards the family and family was very supportive to their raya and their praja in the meanwhile they let the things uh, be safe for him and hide him for several years they provided him food and helped him and they, he was Which under year are we talking about here which i'm talking year? about mejnor no no which year which time uh, this year is after this year is actually after 1857 because in 1857 the destruction of the lucknow took place so after 1857 uh you know uh he was hiding all over the pakhanpur village for several years uh to not be killed because the queen victoria wanted her dead she wanted his head actually off it's like this so after I, I, several years the last uh, last of the mogal uh, and uh, dynasty ruler bahadur shah zafar uh, he ran a well and uh, but all of his sons were hanged within his palace so that was yeah. the time what we have read in the history that all princely states uh, rajas uh, you know it was ordered to kill all of them so um, you know your great great grandfather is uh, one of them yeah exactly because you know the people who stood against the queen the empress uh, were supposed to be killed they were supposed to be called baghi bagawat ki hai uh, i mean there were multiple abusive words used for the uh, sultanates and the and the period what rajas were on but with time when in 1877 the new queen victoria was launched and got title as the empress of india the new queen uh, victoria came up so at that time in that particular period dekho pehle to they were already not able to uh, you know handle uh, the rajas because they were hiding तो ये बहुत बड़ी इंसल्ट थी कि पकड़ नहीं पा रहे हैं इतनी बड़ी ब्रिटिश कम्युनिटी है राज जीत गई है बट राजा साहब को नहीं पकड़ पा रहे तो दिस वाज अ वेरी बिग यू नो तमाशा ऑन देयर फेस सो फाइनली व्हाट दे सेड दे एसोसिएटेड टाइटल विद हिम एंड दे कॉल्ड हिम बागी एंड हिज सन हु वाज 2 इयर्स ओल्ड द राजा साहब मीरा इजाज अली बागी का बेटा एंड ही वाज साइटेड एज पिलर ऑफ गोल्ड मींस इट वाज अ ब्यूटीफुल टाइटल विद अ विद अ स्लैंग वर्ड बागी Pillar of Gold, Bagi. It's written there in the book of history of Bijnor, which is still available in the Oxford and in sorry in the Museum of London. It was again replicated and written by Sir Syed Ahmed Khan, and he wrote very well about Nehtor and the families of Nehtor and the Bijnor family states. And he was very happy when he visited, uh, you know, Bijnor. In the meanwhile, when Mahmudabad was attacked, Mahmudabad Palace, Mahmudabad Palace was reconstructed uh, within uh, definitely within years with the help of uh, Riaya means the Praja means uh, uh, the people around who live uh, the audience. So, and then then there came a period where we started the word called Tehreek-e-Azadi Pakistan right. because 
British I have a very very historic picture sorry to cut you off here prince uh, but i'll share that uh, very historic picture here because this is something that everybody needs to see uh, here we can see your grandfather alongside yeah. uh, kaide azam mohammad ali jinnah the founder of pakistan as well but uh, i want you to uh, talk us through about the details and talk us through uh, about the other things uh, here just talk us through what uh, tehreek e pakistan was because your grandfather was the financier and fa- uh, founder of tehreek e pakistan yeah. uh tehreek e azadi pakistan was uh, in aspect honestly speaking an aspect of freedom because there came a period in history when people wanted freedom from all the rulers they were not really happy with anyone they were not happy with anyone actually so they they said ki hame azadi chahiye and in right. the meanwhile india was already fighting with a lot of things a lot agendas basically uh, they were like uh, they were agendas like um, Okay, now India Hindus were scared of Mughals. They did not want Mughals to come back because right. British war with time it was coming to an end. Then they were Muslims. They were Muslims were not really happy with the uh, with the these uh, what do you call it uh, with Hindus because Hindus were not really supportive to them. They were being very uh, helpful to the you know other parties like. Uh, If you can come in the center of the camera, it would be good for the audience so we can see you properly. Yeah, I'm sorry that my camera is actually a bit like you know. Um, yeah, I don't know what's true. happening to it. These I things have been live session that shows that we are live and it's not recorded. <laughs> we are we are live. We are very yeah. well live. <laughs> right. So the thing was that Indian Hindu. It's not Indian. The word Indian came way later on. Uh, the thing was that Muslims did not want it to be a part of any uh, Hindu rule because they have been Maharajas and Rajas before the Mughal rule, so they were also very harsh. In the meanwhile, right. the initial. Um, initial mohal rule was very horrible for the hindu and and their own people who were the heads at that time so right. they did not wanted any of the person to come come up and be you know a part of their uh, you know like um, be a part of their uh, uh, sovereignty or be a part of their uh, you know their kingdom they wanted their freedom so the aspect of freedom when it began in hindus their uh, the congress was launched and after congress uh, the launching of congress you know my grandfathers uh, uh, my especially the rajas in hemudabad he started talking about the muslim state initially right. the muslim state face was much like that we need a state in india which which is a bit like away from the indian sector and territory we need we never wanted the partition we never wanted to, i would like to correct this thing this is a great uh, you know uh, what do you call it like this is a great confusion in the entire history people always say that you know my family wanted the partition my family never wanted the partition see there are consequences with time which takes place and with those consequences and those political agendas and that divide and rule policy which was there in the mind of people this actually you know uh, hypes up somehow so we never wanted to separate out we always wanted the hindus to live peacefully in their sector and region and muslims to live in happily in their own area we never wanted partition but then with time things became so crucial they became so crucial that the concept of tehreek e azadi e pakistan came into be and this is this is this is the period when from congress jinha was a very good family friend of uh, uh, rajasthan mein muda bad and mera brother lived very family so he was brought up and after bringing him uh, you know the concept of uh, living alone and separate began this got hyped and you know strengthened like so much that uh, uh, british had to accept a new nation because they came up with this decision i would like to call this terminology again uh, associated with british british came up with an idea theek hai agar hum inko alag kar rahe hain to kyun na hum inki nation ko hi alag kar de I get my point, or else yes. we would have been moving into the same. Especially at the time, at the time, what politics were played and how Sir Radcliffe—I uh, won't like to call him Sir Radcliffe. What he did actually is the way he parted the borders. Okay. You know, he, he, it was like uh, you know destroying a country before even it's born, and we still having the. Like, if we talk about especially the two-nation theory, the whole concept. Uh, i don't want to take it to a political aspect but what we're seeing in india right now is what elaborates the two nation theory the muslims what they're going through the kashmiris what they're going through uh, in parts of india i think it, it's something that is 
against humanity. I, 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 I would like to keep it very neutral. I'm not talking here as a Pakistani or as a Muslim, but I'm talking about on human grounds. So that two nation theory is very well elaborated in what's happening uh, by the extremist people in India uh, with the Muslims and uh, in Kashmir. Well. The word extremism is uh, see, I, I, I never I never, you know, associate the word extremism with any Hindu or any Muslim. The word extremism is actually a mindset. It's the right. evil. When when the religion becomes extreme, it's also harsh. When culture becomes extreme, it's a harsh. So you know, you it's like giving birth to a taboo. Extremism is giving birth to a taboo or to a weapon which is destructive for you as well and for us as well. So I would not call it exactly like you know how uh, how it's like projected or on the media or in the book sometimes. The you know because you know. Uh, literally say the media is all sorts so never believe what you see and hear on the media because uh, you'll never get the 100 percent truth over there uh prince uh, i've got so many memories and so many pictures and we're also uh, short on time so i'd like to share some beautiful memories and if you are uh, you'll be kind enough to talk us through about those mem moments and memories so on screen right now uh, can you tell us uh, about uh, this, this is Mira. Uh, this is Mira Izaz Palace, uh, and my father. I guess he came for his vacations from London. Uh, like he came back to his uh, home, so he was there on the vacations. He studied his uh, engineering from London. So when he came back, uh, and this was the period when he was approaching his mother to get him married, because he was in love with my mother, and they met in London. My my grandfather thought my Nanihal thought that he will propose my mother's elder sister, but then oh, he really? came up. With, I don't like the elder one. I like the younger one. My oh, mother wow. was, yeah. My mother was like Princess Alia was ten years younger to my father. Oh, and they met in London because my uh, like my Khala, my mother's elder, you know, uh, sister. She was studying in London too. So when my mother she used to visit my uh, my Khala. So there, my father used to meet my mother uh, for the first time, and this this is how the love affair started. What you guys call in the modern days? Yeah, yeah the modern days. Ki apne baat ki to matlab uh, jo uh, apke father the, wo dekhte hi matlab wo background mein gana bajna shuru ho gaya. Pehli nazar ne kaisa jadoo kar diya? Nahi, is tarah nahi hua. Bilkul dekhen. Wo bhi hota hai ki you know love at first sight. Wo bhi hota hai. But my mother was very much like uh, she was very straightforward. She was very blunt. Her yeah. her tachalus was tash like my tachalus is Clara Lewis. Her tachalus was tash. Tash means the aggressive one, and she yeah. was the woman of uh, his father. Sorry, her father loved her the much, like she was the uh, you know apple of her of his eye. Uh, so my my and my father used to just watch her the way she was living, the the chiffon sari she used to wear, and the way she used to handle herself, very reserved, cute, short, heighted. So you know my father uh, with time. He fell in love with uh, her, and uh, you know because we and you know the the best thing is this. My mother's the uh, dial is uh, later what become big becomes her sasural. It's like this because my mother's father belonged to the Mira is Ibraz family, and my mother's mother belonged to the Mahmood Abad Street family. So right. it's if like share a picture here. Uh, we're talking about yeah. The first oh. picture is uh, probably after the uh, period she got married and she was moved to the Mira Ibraz Palace. The second picture uh, is somewhere she was going to the days uh, very very uh, you know there is this uh, very noble lady called uh, Raj Mata of Rampur, and she was the cousin uh, of my grandfather. First, she was the princess of Peerpur. She got married into the Rampur state, and then she became the Raj Mata of Rampur. So my mother was going to meet her. So that was right. the second picture. The third picture was taken in London, and uh, it was during a party where the princess of Spain was uh, there. You can see in the picture. And the third yeah. picture belongs. The fourth picture, sorry, I'm so sorry. The fourth picture belong belongs to my own home, where my mother she used to cook. You know, because in our family, you know, her vivahik istri ka ye wo hota hai kya kete hain right hota hai ki wo rasoi ghar samale. So my mother right. she used to go to the kitchen and she used to cook for my father and for us sometimes so you uski picture like she used to you know have a sari tied on her back and with a bindi on she used to cook for us so in that fourth picture she's my mother in other three you can see the princess alia uh, of uh, mahmudabad state yes and this is probably right after the marriage 
as we can see that so there these are such uh, historic pictures and i'm yeah. so excited to share these and uh, get to know the real side of the stories uh, which you know as i said in the introduction that you don't get to uh, read in the history books i'll share the next one here uh, uh, we were talking about uh, the olden times so if you can talk us through this uh, is a this picture i'm sorry back. yeah this is a 66 year old back picture uh yeah it's probably 66 years old picture i i guess even a little more uh, uh, older now uh, he's my dada sahe with his kids in the very of the left my father is sitting there small junior uh, mira eras in in uh, in the left uh, mira qaisar is sitting and the princess and then he has his uh, you know marshal minister right behind him which is taking care of him with a person who is servant but he's like a family for sure so uh, he, yeah he's mohan bhai's son i know he's the very good guy who have been very supportive to us in the behind the scenes thing what happens over here to make us who I, we are wow I, i share more pictures because there's so much to talk about uh, talk us to this uh, historic picture uh, this is actually my father's uh, you know my father's uh, uh, maternal side on the, on the, the 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 shorter guy the nawab he's the from the maternal side and these two people were actually the uh, my grandfather's cousins they are they look young but they are elder wow and uh, what about this one uh, this picture okay the picture is during the uh, end of the british period or, or you can say the collapse of the british period period was actually on hype and so probably the raja sahib mira is as sitting over there and uh, the entire team the british people are right over there and you can see how proudly he's sitting hands folded the way he always used to sit so he was the person who was the son of a baghi uh, the the son of the pillar of gold that's mira sayed mira era izaz ali zaidi wow and uh, now, he was an yes, engineer i'll share the next one now and you know, these uh, these pictures are from your family and, and we've seen this in the history books uh, you know mm -hmm. it's so fascinating to uh, get to know the sides of the stories you will see sir sayed over here on the on left the Yes, on the left absolutely and then you have uh, raja sahib mahmudabad who was raja sahib hasan at that time the uh, the great great for the forefather from the nihal side in the middle and other were the ministers uh, standing next to him this and the one who was standing next to him this is such a historic picture you can see sir yeah. sayed khan there as well uh, i'll share the next one so he is also raja sahib mahmudabad but this is probably like uh, like two generations back and uh, because you know we have some kind of names which have been repetitive in my nanhial as in in an honor in an honor so he is the uh, raja sahib mahmudabad basically the the, the maharaja of the uh, state and he was the uh, the major lead towards the tehreek azadi of pakistan yeah the prince if you can talk us through uh, because we we're seeing these medals and you know we we know that you have titles and you have yeah. special medals made for your family so if you can talk us through uh, uh, what these medals are all about and uh, uh, each stamp has its own honor each stamp has its own honor it, it it's it's like a possession of a general right. uh, a colonel like in in modern days if you go to the army you see the uh, sword of honor so these are multiple right. things what you get in the meanwhile when you go in the past these titles and these uh, you know badges used to represent the civil title and the possession of the raja or the maharaja in the entire state of awadh means on right. what uh, on what uh, level he is working on so right. he used to get awarded with a badge uh, one badge represents uh, his family and his uh, title of his family other represents his hierarchy the next one represents uh, the honor given by the state the entire awadh state so uh, by the king like nawab ajuz ali shah or you say, say bahadur shah zafar so they, you know yep. these people used to honor with badges uh, so this was the way how we used to get titled uh, in an honor to live our pride so i'll i'll share uh, some uh, things where you can just uh, talk us through uh, it this is uh, tamghai uh, basically this is from my this is khan bahadur tamghai and this this belongs to my grandfather which is now with my father and this only belongs to the maharaja of the state or the raja sahib of the state who is the current uh, you know uh, authority to deal with according to the royal history so wow. this is the and i'll share the next one i i believe this is yours 
this is mine this is khan sahib tamba i received this tamba probably in a year back this belongs to the person who's actually the uh, next wali ahead of the family the caretaker or you'll say the responsible person of the next uh, yeah, i mean uh, i will and you know there is one more tamba what you get from your family it's called order of yaldaram so order of yaldaram is actually a tamba which represents that you are going to be the uh i mean i will not say you are going to be the next uh, king but you can you are the chosen one so you can be the prince it's like a striking hope uh, order of yaldra means the light of hope uh, or right. the tamba of hope so, so it it actually indicates that you are going to be the uh, next raja but i i i i i i always pray that my father lives and uh, he stays maharaja and i'll be happy with that thing only i guess so if if, <laughs> if, if some time around you know if you ever become the raja so at least you can give me a royal tour of india yeah you can still visit us it's it's fine you can still visit us but you know to get a visa of india is a real trouble so i need your resources uh, you know to get to india <laughs> Uh, no i guess uh, you can come when 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 you know my my minister gets normal so definitely you will be able to visit us <laughs> <laughs> i'd love to I, now i'll share some childhood pictures of yours uh, with your father that's back in 1997 so if you can talk uh, it through okay he's not my father he's my elder brother his name okay. is uh, mira jarar and he's a, and he's elder to me he's you know he's also a prince he's prince jarar and we actually went to istanbul to the cruise right so okay. cruise for elders the party the, the, the way they used to party was really amazing they all they enjoyed the elders were enjoying a lot but we kids were restricted not to go on the deck don't go here don't go there so we were badly stuck on the ship and after a certain days we literally started crying like you know we don't want to stay on this board and we want to get out of here and you know that was the period when my 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 you know my uh, elder brother said okay don't tell anybody but once we will you know dock uh, on the yard uh, you know the shipyard i will secretly take you out so you will be right. will be able to sink the ship uh, the cruise right so this is we escaped the yeah we escaped the cruise and we went out for the outing and we were there for 48 hours you, you can't even imagine and after returning we were already late to the cruise and cruise was waiting for us uh possible uh, you know unfortunately that secret banged out really bad so we had to return back to the ship and we traveled back to bijanor state after certain okay. days you know i have another mm-hmm. picture of your brother if you can talk us through the moment uh okay he is not my brother he is actually my uh, uh, that's my sister that's princess zehra uh, she got she recently got nikafied and she got really married to a very good brother that's your brother in law that's a brother in law that's a brother in law that's nawab wow. hasan wow that that's such a beautiful picture indeed uh, and now i i really like to know something you know uh, uh, when we talk about prince and uh, the royalties you know one thing that we are always uh, very excited about is the way you guys carry yourself you know with all the jewelry and the royal suits and so uh, living a royal life uh, like is that only in the pictures in the movies in the books but uh, or in reality you guys carry yourself that way you know with all those formal attires and heavy jewelry is that a reality or is that that just a myth because i can see that a uh, ring on your uh, in your hand which is like uh, size of my nose <laughs> literally so uh, is that a myth or is that a reality uh, well see uh, when you talk about the heritage and culture so and when you are a ruler you cannot no matter what happens we are not forcing democracy to go off or we are not shattering the democracy but each person lives his or her background and traditions with pride so when you have a strong heritage culture background to be proud of to to celebrate so we always you know invite people to join us in our celebrations if you don't want to come to the mall uh, sorry to if you don't want to come to the royal associations you still believe in uh, in extra democracy uh, uh, you know uh, like avoiding the former royal families or the ruling parties so i really wouldn't mind but uh, definitely we wa- we would like to live our lives peacefully happily and with the same respect and honor and those true colors of our tradition and culture what we have been embracing for hundreds and thousands of years old so living that era in the modern period is very essential to preserve it it's the true. same thing that i do with bharatnatyam if you see i perform bharatnatyam it's probably like 3000 years old but i'm still performing in the same attire what uh, the devadasis used to perform 3000 years back so today wow. i'm in the very meanwhile i'm i'm I, when i am dressed and i dress up myself i dress up for my own set, uh, you know 
I, and I, I cannot even say that I dress up. It actually lives inside me. You know, right. uh, that that Josho uh, Harosh uh, towards the jewelry and Atlas ke kapde and Mahmal and silk. It's still in my veins. So no, 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 it, no. We, we have seen all that in Jodha Akbar. Let, let me be very honest. I have seen yeah. all of that in Jodha Akbar only. Yeah. And now I'll share a picture of yours. You in your uh, formal attire. You know, the, the ones that we have read in the books that this okay, is how... We, uh, we, um, Okay, I usually wear these kind of sherwanis and, you know, uh, and these right. matra malas and big, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, the matra malas and the pearls and all and the diamonds, uh, especially in the big ceremonies of a right. family, because definitely when you go into the office, you cannot wear all these things. So you need to live those uh, moments again in our own family circle. So we are not, we do and we always invite people to come and join us, but, you know, we cannot even force them to live that way. But uh, since you are that person who have been associated with this particular, you know, uh, background, so you have to keep it alive. So it's right. the way of living your forefathers, how they live with the pride and honor. And uh, the, the, the best part is this, what uh, Safa I'm wearing in this, um, you know, in this uh, picture belongs to my great grandfather. That uh, wow. Safa I'm wearing, yeah. Now what I'd like to do here is I'd like to share some pictures of the royal jewelries. Uh, because uh, usually you see those in the museum, usually you see those only in the pictures, but this is what belongs to you and your family. So I'll share a, a bit pictures. I just got them from the internet, you know, I, I, I did my research. So like you have to talk me through what uh, this is and, you know, everything has its own specification and heritage, you know, centuries back. So talk us through about uh, what the particular thing is. So this one right here. Uh, this actually belongs to my uh, great grandmother. What she once gave to my uh, my mother because she was actually having this uh, mushaira in the family, and she was very fond of literature. So she used to wear a shirwani and dress up like a you know a, a man in the haram, and they used to have this mushaira. So my great grandmother, she loved this thing a lot. The way she was active and curious about the literature and art. So as a reward. She gave this thing to my mother, and now right. it's with me, unfortunately. Uh, this belongs so to my mother. Beautiful. This is so unreal, like literally. Yeah, uh, these are emeralds and tiaras, and uh, they and you know they have been like shipped all the way from uh, UK and Spain, and the, these emeralds are from uh, Africa, and these the, and this set actually is like uh, uh, three hundred years old. And this must be, uh, you know, in millions of dollars. Yeah, it's really expensive. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I can just imagine how many zeros come in the value of this, literally. I'll share the next one. Um, this is so beautiful as well. Uh, yes, this was actually uh, a gift from uh, Iran, uh, royal family. Uh, and uh, this was given to my grandmother. And now it's, it's, it's a part of our family, you know, uh, treasure. Uh, and it's been like uh, I guess uh, 102 or years, something like that. Wow, that that is literally old. The, the, I've got this another one. This is, you know, these are one of its kind. Like I have never seen anything like this before. This is Kalki. This is Kalki. What the Rajas and Maharajas and the and the prince wear. So uh, it belongs to one of uh, my family member. Uh, who's my uncle? And the it's all it's completely made of emeralds and uh, gold. Uh, enamel uh, plated uh, and uh, it, it's kind of a very royal kalki what you wear on your safa on your head and you yes. can have rubies and multiple diamonds over it so this long this is a family piece what you can uh, borrow from the royal treasure wow uh, i'll share the next one and that's very famous graph from london it's probably like uh, 100 years old and uh, it's it's made by graph uh, for sure and uh, it has a beautiful, tremendous diamonds, uh, cut diamonds and uh, settled diamonds into it. What you can have a look, it's very glowy, it's very, you know, radiant when you wear it. I'm, just, I'm just trying to calculate the worth of this uh, particular one. <laughs> yeah, totally, you know, it, it, it's out of imagination. I'll share the next one. Uh, and this is beautiful as well. Like, these are things that you guys send to the museum so the world can see. 
I uh, actually this belongs to me. Uh, my mother, see, uh, when it comes to necklaces, there are certain necklaces which are big in, the, in big in shape and sizes. So it's like unisets, what a man and woman can wear and share. So uh, this was actually made by my grandfather for my uh, grandmother. My grandmother sometimes used it for my father. So it's a piece which have been traveling into men and women into my family for uh, two generations, I guess. And now it's with me. So uh, you will often see me wearing this thing in, into the ceremonies when I uh, attend, uh, you know, uh, on the royal uh, eves. Wow! I, I'll share a few more because I'm so excited about this. So that's why uh, I'm that's sharing. That's Mala. That's Raj Mala. What you can, uh, what you can, uh, you know, wear on the festives or on the formal occasions when it's Tej or Tehwar or anything like that in the royal uh, family. Or you can even also wear this thing in the weddings. Because it gives a very, you know, um, you know, striking look to your Shirwani. Absolutely. You know, I'm getting ideas now. But uh, absolutely, uh, the ones I'll wear will be artificial, naturally. <laughs> uh, this is actually a kind of a map, uh, not a map, I'll say it's a kind of a graph, uh, which actually shows how the jewels are placed. Because, you know, there was a period. There was, and it's from a family. It's, a, it's a, from a family. Uh, it's actually a thing that, you know, each diamond uh, has its own, you know, uh, shape. And yeah. in in the past years, in the past years, uh, cutting the diamond was not a very easy. It's like this. Yeah. What they used to do is this: they used to bring the diamonds, which were kind of similar, not really similar, but kind of similar to each other in the size. And they used to, you know, envelope and bind them together. And they used to write what kind of carrot uh, they belong to. And from which country they have been imported to, in order to in order to keep the you know uh, record of the diamonds what have been you know uh, sent to, in the state to the royal family and from which family it has been coming. So it, it, it's completely a record in the manuscript what's what's always mentioned about the jewels. Thank you so much for giving all those details because none of us knew any of it. To be very honest, I'll, I'll share more pictures there. Uh, if you can talk us through, because now we're coming towards the current uh, time. Yeah, Mudabad, my Nana Sahib. Basically, he's my mamu, he's my uncle, but we call him Nana Sahib in honor because he's elder. He has been fighting court cases and for, you know, against the Indian government for because we have been fighting court case, uh, uh, Enemy Property Act court case on our properties because, uh, you know, for the, because my grandfather was a uh, founder and financer to the Pakistan movement. So on that behalf, he has fought a lot for probably for 42 years. So in respect, we call him Nana Sahib, uh, though he's our uncle and his two sons, Ali I, and uh, yeah. Yes, I and, and this is another yeah. very royal picture. Uh, I think it's, uh, and the, even in the picture in the background, you know, if you can talk us through. That's Raja Sahib of Mahmudabad two generations back. Wow, wow, literally. No, these are the things that I've seen only in the movies, being very honest, you know, all those uh, movies where we see those kind of paintings and all that stuff. And it's so exciting and fascinating to actually yes. get get the first hand stories, you know, the real side of the story. Uh, it's so fascinating. I'll uh, share the next one and uh, then we'll continue our conversation. So, uh, hey, we can see as you know, you, you said that you are performing artist. Uh, that's Kev Ghaznavi, if I'm not mistaken, with you, who also performs. And we can see you in your uh, attire of uh, you know the dance that you just spoke about. So uh, uh, this actually was a Satlada Har from India. My mother, whenever I used to perform or do anything related to the classical, she used to get me a piece of gold. Like you know, uh, I want you to wear this. Uh, you know, every uh, every festive when something used to happen. So this was Satlada, and uh, and this was the last piece what she gave me. Uh, before my performance, and I wore it on the Banwad Festival in Karachi, and she's Kev Ghaznavi uh, standing next to me, and uh, he's a very old friend now, uh, who have been throwing festivals with us. So whenever I come there, I I dress up the way I used to dress up. <laughs> hey, this is very interesting, you know, because uh, usually uh, people from ro royal families, the members of the royal families, they don't work, they don't go out. But if I talk about you. You spent a very, uh, you know, a different life. You know, you you uh, broke all the taboos. Uh, you've been a news anchor. You've been a fashion model. Uh, you're a professional uh, Bharat Natyam and Kathak dancer as well, and a very uh, one of the fewest, rarest uh, original ones. Because the one we see is not original Bharat Natyam or Kathak. It, it's just something that's been portrayed as uh, being yeah. Bharat Natyam. 
So uh, talk us through your journey, your childhood. You spent your childhood in US, and then uh, you kept on traveling. Your education was scattered in different countries. Yeah. Uh, but what made you uh, choose this path, and how did you uh, took the permission from your family that you you know you want to do all these things because this is against traditions. See, uh, when it comes to, uh, comes being uh, to become an artist, it uh, it actually see the the way I live being myself as a prince. Uh, I also have a professional side or a, a side which develop which is there in me, uh, uh, which you call uh, which you call passion. Uh, and you know, passion comes from a very spiritual dimension. If you are passionate about something, whether it's about your literature, work, art, your your teaching skills, or whatever you do, it comes within you, and it depends on you how you actually portray it. Uh, in the public, uh, with complete preserved way. So I was uh, introduced to classical at the age of six. I we used to go for summer camps, and there for the first time I saw the uh, fusion of classical dance, and I was like, oh my god, what's that? And I'm a person who explores things. I love exploring. So with, with time, the I, I started to explore these. Um, the the forums of classical there i learned how important and beautiful this particular art form is and with time i developed a very spiritual connection with the bharatanatyam and uh, my mother was always supportive to me my father was very uh, very open to say that you know you're doing classical you know nobody will accept you and you know uh, you are from a royal family and there would be a bunch of questions so my mother was like see it's a part of our heritage and culture uh, especially in india so what if he stays into a into his in, into in a, into a certain boundary where he can perform a very spiritual aspects he will be able to serve a passion in a right way so this is where i joined bharatnatyam i got trained all the way from us to india with the leading teachers and the gurus i always i have been like uh, uh taught by, by by love care and affection my guru uh, my you know my uh, initial guru my teacher uh, who taught me the 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 you know the initial uh, bharatanatyam and then it became more uh, typical with the techniques and uh, uh, you know the because there are techniques of bharatanatyam what you learn from uh, different teachers uh, so with time i took the workshops and i became a good bharatanatyam performing artist and see uh, i succeeded with the thing that i broke the taboos that nobody can do this thing i brought the word bharatanatyam even to karachi all the way from india and i established uh, a forum for people who see bharatanatyam they can understand how bharatanatyam looks like and what bharatanatyam is and it's not mujra it's not related to something like a uh, chief forum it is a very temple performing art and how badly it has survived over years like not just one year to where it has complete decades what bharatanatyam have been through or kathak so this is why i perform bharatanatyam to preserve arts and heritage and culture absolutely and you know you mentioned it that people uh, you know have huge misconceptions that yeah. uh, I, i just said those, those are ignorant people who are not actually aware of art because we're talking about an art which is 3000 years old and yeah. keeping that art alive and performing it on the original level you know it's something i wish i had videos of you uh, performing so people can actually uh, see uh, what i'm talking about but indeed they can go through uh, the internet and search for it so they definitely find something <laughs> So they they can I I had some comments as well. So we have with us the HOD of Greenwich Media Department, uh, Dr. Saber Ahmed, and he welcomes you to the program. Uh, we have with us Saber Ahmed. He says, uh, uh, "Sir Prince Heather Clark, nice to meet you." Uh, so he's happy to. Uh, we have with us so Mary Lee who says, "Prince Heather Clark," and he makes a little heart for you. Hi. And he's really happy, and we have we got with us Sarah uh, Bill who says, "So pretty and so royal." Uh, I think that's about, about the jewelry. That's about the jewelry because you know whenever there's jewelry, there's always women uh, <laughs> somewhere near that. All right. Uh, so we've got with us Noreen Khan, and that's my mother, <laughs> and she's also watching the show. She says very nice and interesting show. So uh, Prince Heather, as much as I'm loving this show, and we've got so much more to cover, but unfortunately we're also running out of time. But I'd yeah. like to ask you. You know, uh, uh, during your visit to Karachi, you've also been to Greenwich University. So, I what have. would you like to say for Greenwich University? Uh, I have been to Greenwich University. I have a bunch of friends uh, uh, who usually. Uh, 
I'll say who usually behave like brothers and sisters, and the, I mean uh, they have crossed the boundary. Uh, me being prince and uh, uh, they being uh, Pakistanis, they have been very much friendly to me, and they have been to me. So I would like to tell them that uh, you know everybody has their own dream to survive in. You have your beautiful heritage and culture and background. Never forget those beautiful things that have, that have been associated to you for several years. And and you one one wrong step can really remove and you know erase all of that history what you owe. And you and it's there in your hands basically. So don't let that thing go away. Secondly, I would like to say is this that um, we are here in this world for a reason. If we are here, we are we are sent for a reason. So if we are here, so Google yourself. Explore your spirituality because that that lives inside you. You use it. Utilize, don't use it. I'll say utilize it. Use it something which can not be used later once it's used. So it's, utilize that spirituality and do good for people. I know one day you won't be living like I wouldn't be living uh, after certain years, but definitely your name will live. Your good deeds will live. Your good thoughts will live in a form right. of your own, you uh, know, way. So I this is my message to the people over there in Pakistan and think good, uh, do good. and speak good right and i'd like to also ask you uh, how was your experience being here at grenish live sessions uh, here with me uh, it was fun uh, see initially it's always uh, always it's uh, alarming because you are on the social media and you uh, always try to you know control your feelings and emotions not to speak something really uh, which goes out of hand because you know there are people uh, what you, like how you say ignorant people there are people who are waiting to attack you so being in my limits being in the restrictions that i have been bonded with Uh, over over years, so uh, I'm. Uh, it's glad to see you, uh, Amashala. After uh, uh, such a great communication we have been having <laughs> over days, so it's great to see you, Amashala. And I hope people uh, are loving the show, and they will, uh, inshallah, meet me, or I will see them soon again, inshallah, into Greenwich University. And I yeah. wish you good luck with your PhD. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. I think you you have done your research as well. <laughs> Right. So, thank you so much, Prince Heather. It was a complete honor to have you here with us today, and thank you so much for uh, taking us through the journey of history and all the beautiful pictures and historic moments that we shared today, and all the insight that you gave us today uh, was something completely that many of us uh, never knew, and uh, you added on so much to our knowledge uh, today. And thank you so much for that. Keep smiling. Stay safe. and keep doing the wonderful work that you've been doing over the years namaskar right so you heard uh, prince heather also known as uh, uh, clark lewis and he was here with us uh, you know that's how actually i was pretty excited because um, I, i've never interviewed anyone from the royal family i've only seen uh, you know we've seen the, those movies and um, we've seen only royal people in the movies or in the a uh, story books and how things goes like that but uh, the part was the the things that he shared with us the power of history with all the uh, royal jewelries and all the um, uh, way that they live and uh, their routine and everything it was um, uh, so fascinating at the same time and uh, yet again uh, i went down the memory lane uh, of history and uh, even we saw uh, his great uh, great grandfather with sir sayed ahmed khan Uh, and uh, we also saw a picture of his grandfather with uh, Qadir Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah. So indeed, he was uh, the founder and financier of Tehreek-e Pakistan, and all the struggles that uh, his family has went through um, um, at that time, and even after the partition, um, the things that they suffered uh, because of uh, uh, being part of the Pakistan movement. They're still fighting those court cases and still uh, going strong. But indeed, uh, such a humble guy. and uh, he never likes to talk much about the things that he is doing so he's got a lot of charity work here in pakistan as well a lot of charity work uh, in india and uh, such a wonderful personality and it was a lovely program i hope you guys uh, enjoyed it as much as i did and this was our session for today um, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow with another session and another guest meanwhile you can see all the details of grand university that is our whatsapp number 0306248383 Six three our email address admissions at greenwich dot edu dot pk and our website uh, that is greenwich dot university where you can see all the programs that Greenwich is offering. Last date to apply online is twenty eighth September and the classes are starting from twenty eighth September. The programs that Greenwich is offering includes BBA, MBA, MPhil, PhD, 
economics, finance, banking, uh, as well as media. That includes uh, animation, that includes graphic designing, journalism, radio, TV, and special 50% discount for B.Ed. program, Masters in Literature and Linguistic programs, and, uh, and Masters in International Relations programs. So visit Greenwich Dodge University and have a feel on your own how life is at uh, Greenwich. So this is your host, Omar Khan, signing off. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with another guest, another session. Until uh, then, keep smiling, uh, stay safe, stay positive, not corona positive, but positive in life. Until next time, Pakistan, Zindabad.